Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm really excited about this topic because we're gonna talk about my kitchen favorites. These are my favorite kitchen appliances, the ones that we use all the time and we just cannot live without. So something you guys might not know about me is I love to cook. I love being in the kitchen and if I had chosen, you know, like a different route in my life, I might've become a food blogger. I know. There were instances of it in my journalism career where I actually did write a lot of stuff on like restaurants and food and everything. And I even went into like health and wellness for a while. And you know, there's just something about it where I decided this is something I love so much that I want to keep it sacred and not make it work. So I pushed it aside and I kind of just left it for myself. You know, like people ask like, what are your hobbies and stuff? I would say that my hobby is cooking and baking. These are the things I like to do when I have some downtime, when I'm trying to, you know, like have an activity with with my kids and stuff, I like to be in the kitchen and kitchen appliances really are a big deal to me. So I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I use in the kitchen all the time, myself and my husband actually. All right, so item number one is the most important item in our kitchen, and that's because it gives us our caffeine in the mornings, and that is our coffee maker. We have the Bonavita coffee maker. We have had this for like six or seven years now, but it's still trending as one of the top coffee makers to purchase. And the reason for that is because if you are a true coffee snob, then you know that the best tasting coffee is pour over coffee. If you've ever been to a fancy cafe where they have, you know, fancy coffees and stuff like that, you've probably seen them make pour over coffee. It looks like they're brewing it over essentially like a beaker in a lab. And that is truly like, it's the best way to get the best tasting coffee. And the reason for that is because they get it to the right temperature, which is between 195 degrees to 205 degrees. So getting it to that perfect temperature, but it also gives you the ability to let the coffee bloom is what they call it. And I'm personally am not really truly into this stuff. It is all my husband who is into this, but what that essentially means is when they are pouring the coffee, they pour it slowly. It looks like it's blooming, like it kind of rises up. And I think it's giving it like the right amount of air. It's getting like the right amount of, you know, just there's a lot happening. Again, I'm not a pro at this. I'm not, I'm not the expert here. It's my husband who is the snob and I in turn get to benefit from having a coffee snob husband. So this is truly the way to get the best tasting cup of coffee. The problem with it is it doesn't make a lot of sense if you are busy. So if you've got children, if you have to get up and go to the office in the morning, you just don't have the time to sit there and wait to, you know, create this like pour over coffee because it's a slow process. You have to like pour a little bit, wait for it pour a little bit more, wait for it. So it takes a little bit longer. So instead, a, a few years ago, I did a ton of research on the best coffee machine to basically replicate this pour over style. And while it's not perfect, it's pretty damn close. This is the Bonavita. Like it is a very good coffee machine. We have had it for years, it is not broken on us. It really does get to that perfect temperature between like 195 degrees to 205 degrees. It does let your coffee bloom. It's truly, it's, a, it's an amazing coffee machine and we use it every single day. If I do have any complaints about it, it's really just the look of it. It's a little bit utilitarian. It's a little bit bulky and I guess a little ugly in a kitchen. That said, we do have a Chemex and it's probably the second most used item in our kitchen. And that is what I was talking about, that beaker looking, I guess, glass. It's not a device, it's just, it's a, it looks like a beaker essentially. It really is a beaker for your coffee and we do use it. My husband likes to make coffee. I mean, like it's like if we can find any like silver linings and any positives from, you know, being uh, at home and self quarantine and stuff is that every afternoon now, my husband uses it to make afternoon coffee for us and he uses this Chemex. So we start off in the morning with the coffee machine, but then in the afternoon we get, special Chemex coffee that he makes for both of us. So we do use our Chemex every day as well. That said, in normal times when my husband was at an office every day during the week, we really only use the Chemex on the weekends. I do have to point out another really well-loved and well-used product in our kitchen because we drink so much coffee and because we are coffee snobs in this house is our coffee grinder. And the reason for that is if you're really concerned about having a really nice cup of coffee, a really great tasting cup of coffee, then you want to have freshly ground coffee beans every morning. So I could probably do a whole other video on the coffee that my husband buys and everything and the reasons why he buys it, but that's like a whole different topic. The thing to know here is you have to have 
coffee beans and you have to grind them fresh every day when you are making your coffee. So to simplify the process, you just get a, an automatic coffee grinder where it holds the beans. My husband just pours them in and it holds the beans in there. And then you just press a couple of buttons and it grinds it for you. My one major complaint about this it is so messy. I don't love our coffee grinder. I didn't research it. I didn't buy it. My husband did. He claims this one, which is the OXO brand coffee grinder. He claims this is the one, like this is the one that everybody recommends. So I trust him with this, but it is so messy. The grinds get everywhere and my, my counter is covered in coffee grinds every day. So you have to wipe it up and it really just, it kind of goes all over the place. Okay, this is the last thing that has to do with caffeine, but it's very important. These are, again, the most used items in our house and the caffeine is probably the thing that we go for the most. So on days when I don't wanna feel jittery from too much coffee caffeine, I do still want caffeine though, I will use my Breville Milk Frother. It is amazing. It's one of the newest additions in my life and I probably had it like two months now. I saw Alexa, who's also known as Glowopedia on Instagram and on TikTok actually. I saw her using it one day to make a matcha latte and I was like what the heck is this thing because it seemed like it was made for matcha lattes but it turns out it wasn't it's just that you can use it for this so it just makes your life so much easier because what I was finding was I would want like a matcha latte and then I would go through this process of trying to make it just kind of like do it quickly but you really can't do it quickly you have to really stir up your matcha and then put it into a latte or it's like powdery and disgusting so this this really simplifies the process because essentially all I do is I turn it on with some oat milk or some almond milk, whatever it is that I'm gonna use that day. I let it spin for just a couple of seconds and then I'll put my matcha in it and I will close the lid and I come back and it's ready to go. That's it. It's that simple and it makes the perfect latte. I'm telling you, it's amazing and it has changed my life. All right, so we are going to transition out of caffeine, which I know I, I spoke a lot about. So one of my favorite things to do is to bake. And I don't know why I went as long as I did without one of these, but I use my KitchenAid mixer all the time. It gets used every weekend, sometimes during the week too. At the very start of the pandemic, it got used almost every single day. It is one of my favorite kitchen tools and it took me forever to get one. Anything that needs to be mixed together for your baked goods, you use this KitchenAid, you know, you start to realize if you get into baking, how much it matters to have like the right speed, the right amount of air, the right tool. Just there's things that you just cannot do with your own hands. Like you cannot whip whipped cream with your own hands. It's just, it's not impossible, I suppose, but it's going to take you twice as long, if not longer, and it's just never gonna come out the right way. So once you get one of these KitchenAid mixers, it's amazing because it's heavy, it sits there, it holds everything in place and it does the work for you essentially, and you can just continue pouring things in. It makes baking so much easier. It gives you this opportunity to just bake more often. So it's one of the most used items in my kitchen. I truly use it every weekend. I guess the reason why I didn't get one in the past was because we had smaller kitchen spaces, so we didn't have the the counter space for it. So that's maybe something to keep in mind is it's, it is definitely big and heavy. So you, while you could put it away like in a pantry or something like that, if you don't have the counter space, I think I would use it less if I didn't just have it sitting on my counter ready to go. All right, next. I actually got this during the pandemic, knowing that we were cooking so much. It is our Le Creuset cast iron pan. I wanted a cast iron pan for the longest time. They seemed a little too expensive for me. Like it was one of those things where I just like couldn't validate the cost to get one of these, but I always wanted one. If you guys don't know, I'm, I'm iron deficient, I'm anemic, so, you know, I always heard from people, even like dietitians and stuff, where they would say, you should cook all of your food in a cast iron pan. But I had gotten a really cheap one years ago. I bought a really cheap one after somebody had told me that. Everything kept sticking to it and it just wasn't, I was like, why do people like these? I couldn't figure it out. Finally, one day I saw a friend had a cast iron pan that she was always using. It was one of these Le Creuset ones. You know, she explained to me the whole process. Like you're not supposed to really wash it the way that, you know, you would wash a typical pan. Like you're not scrubbing the heck out of it or anything, you're keeping it, you know, um, oiled up with olive oil or whatever it is that you're using to cook. You're just kind of letting it 
season. You're seasoning your pan and you're letting it build over time and it just becomes a better pan with more use. And so it's taken me a second to really get used to it, but once I got the hang of it, I fell in love with it to the point where I ended up buying other cast iron pans because I was like, oh gosh, this really is worth it. If you guys don't know, cast iron pans are great to cook anything. It just makes all of your food taste better. You know, if you are into making steaks and stuff, if you don't want to always go outside to, you know, grill and stuff, you can make an amazing steak. That was probably one of the first things that I tried to perfect on the cast iron pan was making a steak. You know, I started to get all of my tips from watching all these YouTube videos and stuff. So while you guys are watching my videos or like skincare videos and makeup videos and stuff, I'm over here watching all of the food videos. So some of the stuff I was watching was basically like how to use your cast iron pan. And I feel like I'm really starting to get it. I don't think it's easy to get it down though. I am i don't even feel like I'm there yet where I'm like, oh yeah, I've got, I, I will always pull out my cast iron pan to cook anything. There are some people who just only use their cast iron pan and that's, that's like my goal where I want to get with it. But so far using it and really like committing to it has been pretty life changing for me in the kitchen. Next up is our mini rice cooker. So if you are Asian, you probably already have a rice cooker in your house. If you are not, let me tell you why you need to have a rice cooker in your house. It's from Amazon. It's the brand is called Aroma. So growing up as a Korean, even though I'm even just half Korean, my mom always has rice in her house. It just does not matter. When you are Asian, rice is always an option. Like you can always walk into your mom's house and be like, can I just have some rice with like some seaweed or anything? Spam, give me anything with my rice. My mom had one of those like larger size rice cookers. It would hold rice. It was like this big tall thing where you would literally take this jumbo like restaurant size bag of dry rice and you pour it in there and then you'd press this little button like there were three little buttons you could press just depending on how much rice you wanted and you would just like pour the rice into your the like rice cooker pan essentially and you would make rice i went ahead and decided as an adult i need a rice cooker as well and for a second there i actually stopped doing it out of laziness but with children especially with isla who is obsessed with rice she is a rice fanatic you tell her we've got rice in the house and she's like oh you mentioned the word rice like we have to spell rice out in our house because if we say the word rice, Isla thinks it's time for her to eat. She loves rice. So we pulled this back out. So essentially, if you guys don't know, these rice cookers, these like Asian rice cookers, they simplify the process of making your rice. If you want that perfect sticky rice, the way Asian restaurants will make you rice, this is why you use one of these rice cookers. It just makes it easy. You essentially just have to clean your rice. It's kind of powdery when you're using the right rice for a rice cooker like this. You have to rinse it. Some people will let it sit actually in water for a little while. I'm too lazy to do that. So I essentially just rinse it out enough so it's not chalky and powdery. I pop it into the rice cooker, set it, and just let it go. And it keeps it warm for 24 hours. So we know that we always have rice for Isla. Okay, another item that we have had forever, we got it actually on our registry, our wedding registry. My husband and I have been married for almost a decade. This is gonna be our 10 year anniversary actually this year. So that's how old this thing is and it's still amazing and well-loved. It is our Breville toaster oven. I never knew how much I needed a toaster oven in my life. I truly didn't. I used to use the good old like just pop some toast in it, put the lever down and you got some toast in a couple of minutes. That's the OG like toaster. That's what I used to always use. But then we decided to get fancy with our wedding registry and put items on there that we you know, didn't own or like didn't think we wanted to spend money on because that's what you do with a wedding registry. And a friend of mine purchased this toaster oven for us. And since then it has become one of the most used items in our kitchen and also one of the most durable, obviously, kitchen items that we've ever had. So I think you, you know, in your head, you're like, oh, why would I need, you know, like this toaster toaster oven for my toast, but we don't just put toast in it. We warm up all of our pizza in it, which is a big deal if you have kids. We do pizza night every Friday. So we warm up pizza the next day for our kids because there's always leftovers. You know, like any items that are baked goods that we want to reheat, we put them in there. I actually find that we reheat more stuff in our toaster oven sometimes than we do in our microwave. Obviously we use a microwave a lot and so it's not on this list. It's like, I feel like a microwave is so obvious. For us, I have found that when we are not in a hurry and we really want our food to taste good, we use our toaster oven all the time. It really is one of those items where you use it so much more than you would think you would. Next up, this is a completely different type of item, but 
I find to be very useful, not just for moms, but truly for moms, is a colander. But it's not just your regular, like, you know, put anything in it kind of colander. This is one that I got from Amazon. It stretches out and you can put it over your sink. And it's very helpful for me now that I have kids because when I am getting like their meals together, they almost always want some type of fruit. You know, if you're not one of those people that's really good about food prepping, like getting your fruit, you know, we get it delivered from our Imperfect Produce box, for instance. So we get all this fruit, but it's always like really dirty because it's organic fruit and it's from different farms here in California and stuff. So it's like truly like this fruit needs to be washed well. So what ends up happening is my kids will start eating their meal, like lunch or breakfast or dinner, any of their meals, and they all always inevitably want some type of a fruit at the very end and it's always berries it really like they love berries we have every type of berry in our house as much as we can and berries are the most annoying to have to rinse off and then you know like have to serve so essentially when i'm getting one of their meals ready i will just grab a handful of berries i will pop open this colander throw the berries on there rinse them off really well and then just let them sit draining over the sink while they're eating their meal and that way when their meal is done, and this is especially important when you have a baby, like Isla's age, she's 18 months, when she's like switching over to whatever it is that she wants next, or if she's just like kind of ready to get out of her high chair, this is, you like need your fruit ASAP, right? So you don't have to wait at all. You walk over to the kitchen, grab it from the colander. It's not dripping wet anymore. You might have to like dab it slightly, but I don't even need to do that usually. And I just have the fruit ready to go and I serve it to them. It changed my life. It makes it so much easier. And even just when I'm like making like a, a bigger dinner or something for the entire family, I still end up using it. It's helped me make salad a little bit more because I find that I'm like rinsing off lettuce pieces and stuff and just throwing it on there to dry off. And it makes it so much easier for me. And then last, I've been really into stasher bags. I've actually talked about them before on this channel, but I have used them for months now and I love stasher bags. They're so nice because I have found that I was one of those people using way too many Ziploc bags. I like rely on Ziploc bags and I felt, I start feeling a little bit bad about the waste that I was going through essentially with all of the Ziploc bags. So I would start looking for an alternative and I found these stasher bags. They're essentially Ziploc bags, but they're reusable because they are made of silicone. So they come in all these really cute pastel colors and stuff. You can get different sets and everything. So I just went ahead and bought a set for the kitchen to see if I would start using it. You have to almost like train your brain to stop using the actual Ziploc bags and switch over to using stasher bags. They're not as see-through. There's something about like having that see-through bag that makes it feel like this is the better option for some reason. It's, it's truly, it's like training your brain to be like, no, you don't need that. Just throw it into a stasher bag. But once you start using stasher bags, they completely replace the need for Ziploc bags. And we end up using them for everything. They sit in our pantry if we have leftovers. Ever since I got these stasher bags, I barely go through the Ziploc bags. And I'm telling you, it makes me actually like kind of grossed out with myself with when I think about how often I was throwing away Ziploc bags, now I use the stasher bags in place of those and it, it just makes you feel so much better that you have a reusable bag. The one complaint I have about them is that you can put them in the dishwasher, but they don't always get super clean in the dishwasher. You sometimes have to end up cleaning them yourself in the sink. So those are some of my kitchen favorites, the must-haves and the products that I use all the time, my husband too. If you guys like this video, there are so many more products. I'm looking at my kitchen right now. There are so many other products that I use all the time. And there's lots of, you know, like kitchen staples that I have too, including like the foods that I eat, you know, like the types of oils, the brands, the coffee brand, for instance. There are so many other things I can do about my kitchen. So if you like this video, let me know in the comments, give this video a like, and I can do a part two as well. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.